Welcome back to the Gemini channel. My name is Laura. If you're new to the channel, I'm going to do a general message for Gemini. Know that energy is fluid. Roles can be reversed. Interpret the message as it best resonates. Also know on this channel, I like to dive deep within the reading. So I do look at everything, but we take time to look at the spiritual blocks, the shadows, and see how they play it as karmic themes. This will allow you to understand why your person's doing what they're doing, why you're attracting who you're attracting, what is the spiritual significance, and how you could possibly shape shift the energy into a much more pleasant reality. All right. Anything of any importance or relevance to the channel, you can find in the description box, including the word of the video. And if you want to enter into winning a free reading, you have to know the word of the video. You'll also have to like the video, subscribe to the channel. Now, the word of the video is always on the first card that I pull out and it's the underlining energy that tells me why everyone's doing what they do. Now, lately, I've been pulling two cards, um, but you don't need to write both cards but we'll see unlock dna i get a lot of information right there <laughs> and as i look over to this deck this is flipped over and it's discussed so i'm going to take it because i feel like it belongs there and there's never any rules to like why I do readings. I mean, but we're going to pull one also, even though I said normally I pull like two or one. Um, anything goes, I can pull three, but you don't have to, again, write all three words. An anchor. This card doesn't even belong in this deck. This card belongs in the other. But we're going to take it. And the reason why is because there's never any mistakes, especially when we're looking at spiritual blocks. A lot of times we'll be like, no, that's a mistake. And spirit says there's never any mistakes. Everything's in divine order. You either learn or you grow, right? Either you learn like, or you either you win or you grow, I should say. Um, so with this, what we see is unlock DNA. So it's this means that you habits, behaviorisms that you inherited from family, like father, like son, like father, like daughter. I don't know what the like again the non-binary we could say. Um, but what we see is that they look alike. They have the same haircut. They have the same like energy to them. And what we assume that this is a father and their child. So create support. So anytime like we inherit habits, behaviorisms, conditioning, it has the potential to turn our DNA on and off. Sickness and disease is only 5% inherited. So what we really inherit is how we react to stress, how we deal with stress, the habits, behaviorisms. So I feel like there were on energies of disgust. Well, obviously that's a lower vibrational energy. So again, if we hold energy of disgust, there's a sense of not liking who we are. And if we, again, feel like we're continually dealing with energies that disgust us, well, you're a mirror of who and what comes into your life. So there would still be a reflection like there was something wrong with us. Even if there wasn't, it's a perception. Remember, a spiritual block, the way a person thinks about things is inherited. The way that we form opinions. When many times we're born into societies that are prejudiced, and then you see everybody's prejudiced, like back in slavery days, right? When, you know, you had people working on the plantation, some people actually thought that that was normal, and it was why? Because they were convinced by society that it was normal. They were convinced by certain people that thought, you know, whatever they thought that it was okay. But this is, again, like um, not good energy. Disgust is, is that. It's that it doesn't work for me. It doesn't give me good manifestation. And over time, if... We continually are living experiences that disgust us. Then we're holding on to anger and we're holding on to rage. And that affects our DNA. Our emotions affect our DNA. So when we're unlocking our DNA is that we are actually uncovering the habits and the behaviorisms that we've inherited that will actually make us inherit certain spiritual psychological and physical imbalances that affect our DNA. Unlocking it allows us to, again, integrate the spiritual lesson. So it talks about 
healing the spiritual lesson to heal the physical body and to heal the mind. Why? Because then you're going to manifest better opportunities, not ones that are in, in alignment with disgust. So what is this relevant to? Well, when we're talking about relationship, it means that you're choosing not to be in a codependent relationship. You're choosing not to inherit the behaviorisms of a parent, either parent, because if you grew up in a very codependent connection, it could be one parent was an alcoholic, the other person was a caregiver. Both are toxic, but understand it's the dynamic of either now you get into a new relationship, or is it your own relationship, and either you're the caregiver or you're toxic. So this is, you're not going to play either one because you're not going to stay in an energy of low vibration. But what got you to this place? What, like, who, what, what, who and what were you dealing with that made you trigger um, this awakening, this healing to you? And this is, again, haunted. It's like you never got over it. There's a trauma, a trauma from the past and where you kept seeing it play out within your life. So what happened is, is that you did the deep dive on, onto yourself. You said, I don't want my life to look like my parents. So you could have a parent that just kept getting physically sick. And, the, and what you would notice is that they also had money issues and they not, not knowing how to support themselves, not feeling safe in oneself. That's inherited when we don't create ourselves. And if we don't create ourselves, it's a lot of times we're distracting ourselves and we can be distracting ourselves through addictions, through, again, outside things that are affecting the DNA, but not just affecting the DNA because what's happening within is also going to be the reflection of what's happening without. Again, and that's with manifest within your world. And being with people that, again, that lie. So I feel like you got in connection with somebody that created a lot of lies about who they are. They presented themselves to be someone that was very secure in themselves, someone that had a good job, someone that um, was respectful. And what you saw is, is that that person hides behind a lot of illusions. They're not really who they say that they are. So they know what it should look like. They don't want to do the work to actually become that. But they wanted to be seen as superior. So again, that's why they created that I'm successful. I have a lot of money. I have, again, things that they perceive to make a person superior. And really, they're not superior. They have a very low self-esteem. So this is someone that overcompensated and they overcompensated by creating illusions and having expectations and possibly the expectations of everybody is that thinks that I'm successful, that I have so much money. Well, they're going to come and they're going to give me because people that have money are treated better. So I believe that you're connected to someone that was brought up that didn't have a lot of money and they, you know, they didn't really know they weren't strong within themselves. So it didn't mean that they didn't acquire a good job. I feel like this person's a smart person and they can get a job. And But I don't believe that their job is as good. I don't believe that they make as much money. I believe that they try to show you um, a perception of the life that they desire to have. And this is why they wouldn't let you get that close. So this uh, works for two reasons, because I don't let anyone get that close to me. They're always trying to get closer. So they have people that usually fight to, you know, claim their spot in this person's life. And they don't really have any intention of giving anyone the spot because their life isn't really a, a true life. They created a facade because they're still haunted from the traumas of the past, what they inherited. So this person didn't really give you that much, but they had the expectation that you were going to give to them. 
And again, their excessive behavior. So it's like in the fact that they're not strong within themselves, they always have to prove a point. So I feel like this person, you know, would do things to test you, to try and get you to give them more and more energy. And that's not what happened. But what happened is it wound up triggering you. You wound up getting disgusted by, by this person. And that's the irony. This person has a spiritual block where they they are disgusted by themselves. Again, and they inherited that, which is why they create the illusions of who they want you to perceive that they are. However, what they continually manifest is having people not really like them, having people like disgust because that's the energy. People always wind up see, seeing who this person is. You know, they avoid criticism. They don't know how to like to like just have a conversation. They take everything actually as a conversation. If you're not agreeing with them and praising them and falling all over them, they see it as like you're criticizing them. So this person is very overly sensitive. They don't like to take responsibility for their actions. They have avoidant behavior. That's also uh, an inherited behaviorism that will suppress your DNA. Again, and they're impatient. It's like everything now, because they have abandonment issues. So everything needs to happen now and everything needs to look a certain way while it's happening. So they're very controlling, which actually also affects DNA because they're always creating a very stressful environment and one that's very manipulative. And person that's not grounded in themselves doesn't realize that there's a process for everything. They don't want to give the energy to build a connection. They just want the connection to just be. And now that is not happening, they're impatient. But really what it is, is, is that it's not happening. And so they're being forced to look at themselves. They don't like that energy. And so they distract themselves with impulsiveness of buy, overbuying, overeating, very excessive behavior, trying to fill themselves again because they feel so empty inside. And really it's because here it is, it's like you didn't act the way that they wanted you to act, how they expected you to act. And so it all comes back to them. They don't really want that type of relationship. They have avoided relationship they have fear of change so it's almost like they have fear of change but they don't like the fact that nothing's happening so they're almost like waiting for you to reach out so the more days that go by the inevitable is there this person knew down deep inside you were never going to reach out to them they knew it because why would you if they didn't treat you well and you're left with the feeling of disgust why would you they didn't want what you wanted. That's what it made. That's what you felt. You saw, again, the dynamic of how they set up their relationships was pretty much how you grew up in. So again, how this reading opened up is unlock DNA. And we unlock our DNAs when we don't copy behaviorisms and habits that our parents had. Now, like a lot of times our parents grew up in certain environments that made them create the habits and the behaviorisms. This person needs to like, again, like break whatever family karma that they have. With you, I feel like you did it. However, now that you did it and they assume that you were going to react a certain way and that you're not, this person still doesn't want to do the healing. They're getting angry. And, but they're trying to avoid it. And they're trying to avoid it with their impulsive energy. So they might not look like they're in fear, but it's it coming out in their mannerisms. We're overbuying, overeating, doing drugs, drinking too much, very excessive behavior, hooking up with different people. It's all avoidance. It's all escapism because, again, this person is fear of change. But that's why they're impatient because they know you're not coming back and they know that they should have came back and that they wasted a lot of time. And, and be, when a person doesn't want to heal, what do they do? They project. 
So you say, how does this person not looking? Well, they project. What you're doing is you're making them heal. They don't want to heal. You're different. They assume that you will go into act a certain way, possibly because you grew up the same way. You had a lot in common. And because all the other people that they've dated acted a certain way. So they just kind of clumped you in with everybody else. But what this is, is this is more about what's saying for them. Because I feel like you're someone that's clear. Now, their projections could bother you if you don't realize how spiritually imbalanced they are. But again, if we're talking about DNA, believe me, they're spiritually imbalanced because it means that they have inherited ancestral karma, family karma, individual karma, all from living out of alignment with their true self, their higher self. So th what it comes down to is they don't really know who they are. They have fear of change. They thought you were going to act a certain way, again, which was to be codependent. That's what they know of. And you didn't act that way. And it's not even like they wanted you to act that way. They want to get what they can get from you being codependent. Because codependent means that you're giving too much energy to them and not enough to yourself. It's like um, what they felt. That's too many. That's too many. But I have to say... The card that fell over I'm going to take, which is family patterns. And then there was body. There's anxiety. We're not going to take any of these, okay? Because they weren't. They were, and I never believe in any mistakes. Again, everything's in divine order. So again, the, in the family patterns is that. It's that it's inherited. How do we unlock our DNA when we break those family karma? So I feel like you did that. That's what's triggering to this person. This person needs to do it. They don't want to do it. They have anxiety about it. They're not grounded enough. They get all up in their head. They get triggered too much, which means that they have a lot of baggage from going through very similar experiences and never healing them. So, I mean, when we see energy like this, we don't really see that there's going to be that much of a positive outcome because this person's in, in their ego. Though we always ask and say, is this person going to do anything Darn it. Are they going to do anything? My cards are falling everywhere. And that was just too many. So like it was like 50. So I can't take that many. However, um, I'm not even going to take that deck. We're going to see. Is there any potential at all for like this connection? Like, let's see. Um, struggle. It would there would always be a struggle because again, this person has a lot of spiritual blocks. And they would have to, again, do inner child healing, shadow healing, you know, reparenting. They need to change everything. And again, remember, there's always a space between what is reaped to what is sown, right? To what is sown to what is reaped, whatever, however you say that. Um, but meaning that in the dropping of an old life, there is no life. You have to create a life. So you need to be strong enough to be able to stand on your own. And I feel like this person is not strong. So if they're not strong, the relationship obviously would be a struggle. Everything's going to be a trigger, especially if you are breaking those family patterns and those family patterns of codependency seem so natural and right for this person. Because they also grew up that way and it's familiar, it seems right. It doesn't mean that they get good results. It means that they're usually the dominant one for most of the relationship. And then the relationship ends and it ends horribly. That's usually what happens, which is why this person doesn't really like commitment, but they want the codependency, which is they want the best of the relationship that benefits them, which is very selfish, which is what I feel like you grew up in. Again, because this was all about you, your story, and you unlocking DNA. But the only way that you would be able to unlock that DNA was to wind up with someone that had the same behaviorisms as a parent. So if you had an alcoholic parent, this person's an alcoholic. If you had an avoidant parent, this person's avoidant. If you had an emotionally intelligent, unintelligent person, well, guess what? This person is not going to be emotionally intelligent. So it's mirroring the same thing. And so at this point, it's like you just feel like the connection's crushed because you don't think that you can see them the same way. And you're too terrified of giving up who you are.
You're like, I'm not going to like sabotage my life. I also, you have a, an imprint of what it was like to grow up in that type of dynamic, that it wasn't healthy, not just for your parents, but it wasn't healthy for all the siblings and everybody else that lived in the house. So you, when you go back and you reflect on that, that's what it brings up. So it's almost like you can't look at this person the same way. And so in that, it's almost like the connection is lost. And it's lost because, you know, you learn the spiritual lesson already. However, you needed to go through this experience where you actually chose yourself in order to fully transmute the negative energy. Otherwise, you're still going to pull people to you and experiences to you that are codependent, where meanwhile, this the universe brought you into this person's life because the universe is saying, this person is extremely codependent and um, they're not happy with what they create. They don't know how to not create it. So we're going to create the same dynamic, but we're going to put them with someone that's more elevated, someone that's more of a higher consciousness. So again, so that they can see a different perception. And that's why they went from one extreme to another extreme where they're like, you know, don't really want that, you know, to recreate codependency, but it feels comfortable. So that, which means that they have to focus more on creating themselves instead of saying, well, I'm either going to be with this person or not. It's not black or white. It's not the same every day. That relationships need to be fluid. That we need to have flexibility. It's not about controlling. Codependency is about dominance and control because the person feels lost with, they don't know who they are. So they're utilizing that person's energy for them. That's how you grew up. So there was always one parent that was bitter and which would mean that you would be that bitter person because you wouldn't be able to be growing your own energy and it's a way that that you would be unconsciously being suppressed you know it's not that you even know and robbed your innocence when you were a child it's again and so that it was you know organized but it was chaotic because you're not supposed to be code when you grow up in a codependent uh, uh dynamic where the parents are codependent well then the children become codependent too because the parents are not capable of giving the children what they need so now the children become the caregivers and so there's a sense of again losing one's identity and also like living in organized chaos because children shouldn't be parents it's abuse it's psychological abuse because it's the constant, like you're not showing up for the parent, you become responsible for the parent. But meanwhile, the child wasn't able to go out and create themselves. So they don't really know themselves. So they're always looking for that love outside of themselves. So they always wind up in toxic codependent relationships because we, we, if we're looking for love outside of ourselves, we're never going to find it. It's like we have to be able to obtain it and acquire it within ourselves in order to attract it in our life. Once you did that, well, Gemini, you were like, I did that already. So I see I don't need it. And I also know the outcome of, of being with people that don't have it. The relationship doesn't go, go anywhere. If anything, it just sabotages that person that you know, the codependent person wants to leech on to because it becomes a competition. It becomes where this person is like, isn't really working with you. They begin to work against you because they haven't formed their own identity enough, which is why they're codependent. So they're looking at certain things in their life as if they're broken and they try to obtain it again through the relationship. But then that means you can't be growing yourselves, becoming yourselves, which is that's how this started. It's like, and that's why this person's so attracted to you because they need to do that for themselves. The problem is, is that they don't even know where to start. You'll be doing it. They're going to want to come in and they're controlling. Those behaviorisms are still there. So it would be wind up being abusive because they don't know any better. 
two came out is there and they're too prideful and is this is more about being learning to how to go with the flow of life and and that you everyone has their own unique unfoldment process where we co-create with the universe it actually is like a dance so having someone that's there that's like wants you to make sure you're taking care of them it's almost like having a person that keeps wanting to cut in on your on your while you're dancing with somebody it's annoying it's like you're like oh this person keeps coming in and they meanwhile they don't know how to dance so that means you can't dance you can't enjoy your time and they're not going to let you dance with anybody else so they keep you restricted because they don't know who they are. And that's why Spirit's saying you can't save a person that doesn't want to save themselves. You saw that growing up in the environment that you grew up in. This is the same exact experience because you're getting someone that wouldn't allow that. It is abusive and they're too prideful to, you know, not want to like the not want to have that control. They can't help it. It's what they feel normal. So it's almost like you know that this person wouldn't bring anything positive to your life. It's like that they would only know how to sabotage it. They, again, be more in competition with you or want to take what's yours. Or again, you're getting too much attention for them or want to ride on your bandwagon after they haven't even been in your life. So for all those reasons, spirits saying, no, they're codependent. They feel broken. They see you got things going on. They misjudged you. Now they see it. Now they want to come back in. But at this point, it already ruined the connection. So even though they're going to come back in, they're in for a rude awakening is what we see here in this story. Because again, it's like you can't just come back in after not giving attention. You've already created yourself. You would say, what are you bringing? What's here? And they would have absolutely nothing to show you because um, they didn't create themselves. They didn't put the heart and soul into becoming themselves. That's how we change our DNA because we change the habits and the behaviorisms. If our parent was a cheater, if our parent was an alcoholic, if our parent... However, our parent dealt with stress, dealt with life. It's not uncommon that we would learn how to deal the same way. What the Spirit says is that you learn that lesson. However, that doesn't mean that you won't be prone to attracting that energy because that's where you come from. So it's about you know, going through the spiritual lesson to see a different outcome, meaning no one can take what's yours. Only you can. And that's by being with a person that isn't on your vibration, that hasn't created themselves, that likes everything that you are, but what isn't willing to do what it takes, would like to just come on in and have you do it for them since everything looks so good. But then what are you doing for yourself? And that's why it's like, no, it's like because there's a lot more at stake. When you're in a codependent, horrible relationship, it affects your health. You see horrible relationships, a heart attack, young age in their 50s, late 40s. I knew one guy that had three heart attacks by the time that he was like 45 years old. No shit. It's like 40s, 50s, like have major heart issues, have stomach issues, have, have major health issues from living in the drama because psychologically, emotionally, and that's what happens with codependent relationships. And that's why you did things different. You're, you're like, I'm not going to go into this, no matter what kind of connection we have. I don't care. It's all about self-love. It's all about choosing myself, that you attend to your own needs by listening to your own heart, that your inner, that your inner essence lets you know what is good for you, that you respect your limits, you answer the request of your body and soul and learn to love yourself, which obviously if you grew up in a very codependent environment where there was, you know, addictions and other things, you didn't learn to love yourself. You were the parent. So you're used to giving, you're used to doing 
And so this is not about that. It's like you can love them unconditionally because and they did the best that they could, your parents. But this is about loving yourself so you can create a whole new life so you can unlock your DNA, not just heal your life, but heal your health, heal your wealth and your all around emotional fulfillment. And that means better relationships. I'm going to leave that there, Gemini. You let me know how you resonated with this one and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.